Good morning. Good morning. Absolutely beautiful outside. We thank God for his mercies on his people, for um, the number of people that have been accidents in the last few weeks. We thank God for Dave and Susan that are here with us today after a rollover accident earlier this week, that they are safe and mostly unharmed, a little sore, moving a little stiff, but when you see the pictures of their vehicle, there was nothing but the hand of God on them, and we, we thank him for his mercies. Um, we are, this is our last Sunday together before Christmas. And I've struggled with today's message. And I, I had a whole bunch of things that I felt like I was supposed to say, and I, I couldn't really get them all in a cohesive manner. And while I was praying yesterday, I'm looking at all these notes that I've gotten. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like uh, when I was a kid, they would say, oh, look, there's the Big Dipper. And I would look, and they would be pointing out with their stars. There's just stars. Right there. Yeah, there's a lot of stars right there. Which one's the Big Dipper? Well, I, I was probably a teenager before I realized they were talking about a series of stars. And I was probably an adult before I ever saw it. Because when I looked up there, I just saw this mass of stars. And that's how I felt this week. Because I, I just felt like there was a lot that needed to be gone over today. And as I was praying yesterday, I really felt impressed. A couple of years ago, we did a Christmas program, and God had me go through the scriptures and simply put in as near a chronological order as I could the story of Christmas. And God willing, we'll do that again uh, in the future. But today, all I am going to do is read to you the Christmas story, okay? Um, I'm going to be jumping around. We're going to be in the Gospels. We're going to be in the Old Testament. We're going to be moving quite a bit this morning. So I'm, I'm trying to give you a cohesive story of the birth of Christ and all that went on, all that was prepared for this to happen, all that was prophesied that this would happen. So I've, I've made slides so you can keep track up on the the um, overhead, okay? But what I really want you to do, I want you to, to really focus on what God is doing in this history, okay? So, um, without further ado, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a son. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the, angel over, and the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. 
Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who is called barren. <clears throat> For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. <coughs> and the angel departed from her. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. It shall crush the forehead of Moab and break down all the sons of Sheth. God said, No, but Sarah your wife shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his offspring after him. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until the tribute comes to him, and to him shall be the obedience of the peoples. And Judah, the father of Perez, and Zerah by Tamar, and Perez, the father of Hezron, and Hezron, the father of Ram, and Ram, the father of Amminadab, and Amminadab, the father of Nashon, and Nashon, the father of Salmon, and Salmon, the father of Boaz by Rahab and Boaz the father of Obed by Ruth, and Obed the father of Jesse, and Jesse the father of David the king. And David was the father of Solomon by his wife, by the wife of Uriah, and Solomon the father of Rehoboam, and Rehoboam the father of Abijah, and Abijah the father of Asaph, and Asaph the father of Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat the father of Joram, and Joram the father of Uzziah, and Uzziah the father of Jotham, and Jotham the father of Ahaz, and Ahaz the father of Hezekiah, and Hezekiah the father of Manasseh, and Manasseh the father of Amos, and Amos the father of Josiah, and Josiah the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the deportation to Babylon. And after the deportation to Babylon, Jeconiah was the father of Shealtiel, and Shealtiel the father of Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel, the father of Abiad, and Abiad, the father of Eliakim, and Eliakim, the father of Azor, and Azor, the father of Zadok, and Zadok, the father of Achim, and Achim, the father of Eliud, and Eliud, the father of Eleazar, and Eleazar, the father of Matan, and Matan, the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David were 14 generations. And from David to the deportation to Babylon, 14 generations. And from the deportation to Babylon to the Christ, 14 generations. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, 
Do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and he went to be registered each to his own town. <clears throat> and Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from old, from ancient days. Because he was the house and the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary his betrothed, who was with child, and while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with fear and the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angel went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus the name given by the angel when he was conceived in the womb. And when the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what was said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, waiting for him, uh, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus, to do for him according to the custom of the law, 
he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed him and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there is a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not, she did not depart from the temple worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak to all who are waiting on the redemption of Jerusalem. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. <clears throat> then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he said to them, and he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. And when they departed, departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. When Israel was with child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious. He sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem, and in all that region who were two years old or under, according to the time he had ascertained from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, A voice is heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel is weeping for her children. She refuses to be comforted for her children because they are no more. But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Rise, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the child's life are dead. We celebrate Christmas with, with 
good reason. But we have so inundated the true heart of what that gift was, what that first Christmas was. We have so flooded it with nonsense and misunderstanding and misapprehension that we, we have reduced it to silliness and pettiness. A number of years ago, I, I shared with you about Saint Nick, Santa Claus, and how the man that we call Santa Claus would be appalled at the view that we hold of him. We've talked about how we, you know, every single nativity scene that I have ever seen has the wise men there presenting their gifts to the baby laying in a manger. But they weren't there at the manger. They came from the east. They came knowing and understanding from the, the scriptures that were left there by those who were in exile, those who had been deported to Babylon. They brought with them the Hebrew Bible, and it was left there. And, and Daniel's writings were there for them, and they were able to discern from those writings what this star meant. And they packed up, and they went, because it was that important. And they traveled for two years following the star. They come to Israel and they go in to Jerusalem. And they're looking for what the, the prophecies have said. The king of the Jews. And it would make sense. The first place they would go is to the palace. To the place where the king lived. Where is he? The one that is born, king of the Jews. We've come to worship him. What were those who had received the promise doing? The Messiah had come in fulfillment of the prophecies according to the writings that they had, that were given into their care. And yet here come wise men out of the east Pursuing the fulfillment of that prophecy. And they were in ignorance. And Herod was troubled. And all Jerusalem with him. What are they talking about? The one born king of the Jews. And so Herod says, hey, hey. Where is this, this Messiah supposed to be born? Where did they go? They went to the same writings. Bethlehem. He's supposed to be born in Bethlehem. But did they pack up and go? No. The wise men went. And you can't fool God. Because the wise men departed with the words from Herod. Come back and tell me so I too may go and worship him. But think about this. The time he was born... The star was there. It was in the heavens. It said it were there for two years. The angel appeared to shepherds. The angel didn't go to Jerusalem. Didn't go to the priests. Didn't go to the rulers. Went to the shepherds. And they proclaimed the birth of the Christ. And the shepherds went and looked to see this miracle. But they didn't just go and see. They proclaimed it. They, they told everyone, look, an angel appeared to us, and the heavenly host was above us. The Christ has been born. And we look at that word and we go, oh, that's the last name of Jesus. Jesus Christ. 
No, that's his title. This, this defines who he is. He is the anointed one of God come to fulfill the promise given in Genesis 3 to be the one that would bruise the serpent's head. To be the deliverer of man. This is what they were looking for. And yet, we have no record that anyone from the temple, anyone from the priesthood, anyone from the Levites came to worship. They were busy. They were doing their religious stuff. We don't hear word of even common man coming out of Jerusalem or from Galilee or from Samaria. We, we have no word other than that the shepherds went. Everybody was busy. They had stuff. Life was happening. And the greatest event in the history of man happened right there under their noses, and they were oblivious. And see, we see the same thing happening today. I love Christmas, don't get me wrong. I love the lights. I love the music. I love the, the fact that people that normally wouldn't look at you twice will smile and say Merry Christmas. There just seems to be a, a different feel in the air. But if all Christmas is about is decorations and gifts and eggnog, really not about all that much, is it? I want to encourage us, all of us, celebrate. Celebrate. Go to parties. Celebrate with your family. Celebrate with your friends. But celebrate what's worth celebrating. It's not the eggnog. It's not the music, it's not the tree, it's not the presents. The Messiah has come. And see, while they were looking at that event in real time as it's happening, we're looking back through 2,000 years, not just to that baby in the manger, we're looking to that Savior on the cross, buried and resurrected so that we can have new life. So that we can have a living encounter with the Almighty God. Day in and day out. The entire nature of creation has changed because of that faith. Sin no longer reigns. Death no longer rules. You see, for a Christian, there is no death. You just change addresses. You move. You graduate. Because you go from one instant, from this life, and you are ushered into the presence of the Almighty God. And without that, without that knowledge, without that understanding, without that relationship, then Christmas really is just about decorations and presents and eggnog. Father, we bless you this morning. We thank you, Lord God, that your Son has come. Fathers, we celebrate this coming week and we gather together with family and friends and we exchange gifts and we sit to feasts with plenty and surplus. Help us to keep our thoughts centered on what it is we are really celebrating. Father, let us not be distracted. Let us not have our attention divided, but let us give it wholeheartedly to you, to the miracle of that birth. That 
to Cain in the flesh. That you grew in a world that hated you, suffering every temptation that any of us ever would, and yet were without sin. And then being absolutely innocent of any crime, you went to the cross in our place. And as the scripture says, you who knew no sin became sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. Thank you for this most incredible and amazing gift. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you would continue to teach us, to open our eyes to all that this means, that we would live our lives wrapped in this understanding, that we would see with true vision how lost the lost are. How desperately they need you. We bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' name.